Hi everyone, my name is uh, Jaime Casanova, and I'm going to talk about high availability. Uh, this is something everyone wants, and almost never gets the way we want. Yes. Okay, um, I'm from Ecuador, PostgreSQL contributor, um, founder of EasyPug, Spanish community support, in PSQL is Ayuda, uh, and part of Second Quadrant's Spanish support team. So, let's talk about, uh, okay. What's high availability is basically uh, a service, uh, techniques we use to um, keep our services running, right? Um, this is not uh, about data availability. This is about service avail availability. Um, in, in service availability, you are uh, allowed to lose data to keep the business running, right? So, um, and this is, this formula which tries to get the availability in, in a percent uh, unit. So, it uses uptime, uptime plus downtime divided. Now, this is the simplest form of this um, formula, and this only uh, considers um, times, which is uh, very simple. Okay. Now there's a version of the formula which is a little more complete, which considers uh, mean time between failures and mean time to recover. Technically, um, if mean time to recover tends to zero there isn't matter how many failures are, there are, if really you can get zero time to recover. That's very difficult. Now, uh, what this formula tries to calculate is a number in this table. Basically, uh, we want to know in a percent number um, our availability, right? The more nines, the better. Getting there is very, very expensive. Yes. Now, um, oh. okay, let's think in, in, in a simple case, okay? I don't know if you have been in the room where the boots are. There is a mag saying damp is not backup. Have you read that? Okay, that's true. But it's actually the, the more common way of a backup that people use. Okay, so I will take a, an example very Bad example. Uh, suppose you have a one terabyte database and only backup you have is dumps. That, that is dump actually, see? But it can happen. I, I know it happens. I have seen it. Now, Let's consider that it takes eight hours to restore this one terabyte backup. Probably you don't believe me because eight hours is too little time to restore a one terabyte database and, and probably that's true. But well, uh, using our formula, what I did was um, multiply 365 days by 24 hours, 
and it's um, 8,760. And I uh, subtracted the eight hours it took to restore the database. That's my downtime, right? So in this case, this database will have an availability of 99.90%, which is not bad, actually. Well, if that's the only problem they have in the year, and, and I don't believe it, because if, if they only have a, a dump as a backup, they probably are doing many, many things bad. Okay. Now, uh, just to be clear, this case is actually possible considering a, a, a few things. I, I'm sitting here. Uh, this is a real case, but uh, they are using multiple parallel jobs to restore, and they are restoring data selectively. They have uh, partitions and only restore their recent partitions, and uh, then they start restoring the rest history, which is not important for transact current transactions, okay? In this example, we are only considering um, recovery time objective. Uh, I want to restore as soon as possible. But we are not considering recovery point objective, how many data I want to retain. And, well, it's a dump. Will be data loose, lost, okay. And that could be good for high availability, in theory, but bad for our business. And, and that's bad. So, uh, we can improve that, certainly. How? Well, Postgres, as you know, allows you to have standbys. So a replica is an, uh, an excellent way to have um, a backup. <laughs> yeah? it's, it's a server that is ready to start working in case the primary fails. So now, what what happens if primary fails, if actually fails? Well, you need to consider first what your circumstances are when the incident happened. Are you available? Or, or well, the DBA or, or the support engineer. It, it's supposedly there is always someone in charge, right? But fact is, People sleep. Fact is, people eat. Fact is that people normally assume nothing will happen because nothing has happened until now. Why it will happen now? Right? So, your availability is important. Also, you need to detect the failure. That, that seems obvious, right? Well, a lot of people have monitoring things to det detect that. But I have seen a lot of people having the monitoring in a screen in the office. Uh, that is useless, because if I not looking at the screen, I don't understand there is a problem, right? Okay, if you have some uh, alerting system, that would be good. Uh, did you remember to update application servers? I mean, you can uh, promote the standby, which is a very quick operation on Postgres. Just execute PGCTL promote, and don't, right? This is seconds. But you need to update all application servers. 
and that needs careful planning. If you haven't planned it, like most people do, I mean, most people don't plan, then you need to start thinking in the, in the ancient moment what else you have to do. So I put it one hour as downtime. I, I, I'm not believe it's only one hour. I think I'm pretty sure it will be at least four hours, but let's say one hour. Still, you have 99.98% availability, which is much better than the damp, right? If you only have this problem in the whole year. OK. Can we improve this, get better availability? Yes, we can. But first, I need to explain there will be other problems. For example, you normally don't want just one standby. You normally want more standbys and distributed ones, right? Normally, uh, I have seen people with at least two standbys. Now, if you have two standbys, then you have a problem now. Which one you will promote? Yes, uh, in Postgres there is a view, piece that replication, which can help you, but that view is only accessible on primary, and primary is down. Sorry, you can't use it. So there are these two functions, PG last clock receive uh, location and PG last transaction reply timestamp. You can use them to try to get the, the, the correct standby to promote. What happens if you don't promote the right standby? You damage the cluster, meaning you need to reclone the other standby. If you only have two standbys, well, that's maybe not too bad, but if you have three, four, five, or more standbys, then you are in problems. Okay, and, and yes, uh, normally if you have more than one standby because you are using them. Uh, in, in Ecuador, there is an um, institution that has three standbys, and they do load, load balancing on those three servers. And if they lose one, they start having problems because it is um, documentation of the government. There are always people connecting, uh, consulting something, crying something. So uh, imagine now you promoted the wrong standby and you lose, lost the other two. And it takes about four hours for every standby. So it's at least four hours in, in, of downtime. Yes, downtime because uh, people simply won't be able to work the way they normally do. Okay. okay. Um, also, you need to restart servers to follow the new master. That took time. And you need to inform application servers. So, what we are going to do to solve these problems, we are going to use two tools, Rep Manager and PG Bouncer. Rep Manager is a tool um, made by Second Quadrant. It's a uh, free software. You can use it uh, free of charge, charge. We only charge if you uh, look for support, okay? Um, Current version is 4.1. 
What does rep manager? Well, rep manager administers um, okay. administers um, replicas, huh? but also has uh, the ability to detect if the primary of the cluster failed. And if it failed, it has the ability to determine the right server, the right standby, to promote. And it doesn't uh, get false positive. It's always correct. I haven't seen a case in which it has promoted the wrong standby. It is possible, of course, every software could have bugs. But I have not done it yet. <laughs> OK. So it has this basic command, master register, standby clone. You can register uh, nodes and register nodes. You can um, promote servers, make others, um, standby, follow the new master, and you can make a switch over, which is a planet change of roles between two servers. OK. I'm not going to use, in this example, wrap manager standby switch over. That's uh, for homework for you. It's not too complicated. And installation is very easy because you can use repositories uh, for CentOS, Red Hat, or Debian. Uh, I'm doing this test with CentOS. You need to configure Postgres to, do, um, to work with Web Manager. For doing that, you need to check these parameters. These ones. I have um, two options because it depends uh, on Postgres version or Rep Manager version. Uh, until Rep Manager 3, at least, Charlotte Preload Libraries uses Rep Manager Funks library. On Rep Manager 4, it uses Rep Manager library. Until, well, you can always use logical in one level, <clears throat> at least uh, when one level logical started to exist. After, uh, before that, you need to use hot standby or replica when it exists. Okay? This is with uh, Postgres 10. Uh, please use Postgres 10 or 9.6 uh, at the very least, but not older versions. They are good, but they are going to get, they are sooner get out of, of support, because remember, we only support five versions. So uh, if 11 is going to get out in September, we are going to have 11, 10, 9 .6, 9 .5, 9 .4. 9 .3 9 9.5, 9.4, 9.3 will be out of support. Right? OK. <clears throat> well, keep segments, archive mode on, archive command. They, these are not really necessar necessary for Web Manager, but it's a good um, idea to have this in on. Maxwell, send, uh, Maxwell senders, max replication slots. In 10, this is default values for them. In 9.6, you have to actually change them. And hot standby on the same. In 10, is, this is the default value. 9.6 will have to change it. Also, you need to configure phba.conf to allow connections. Create a database for Rip Manager uh, and a user for Rip Manager. I use it, user Postgres and database Postgres because I'm very lazy to do that for a test. But for real life, 
use a, a database specific for that and a user specific for that. Okay, <clears throat> and you need to create repmanager.com. This is the very list you need on that uh, configuration file. Actually, PGB in here, you, it's only needed if you are in, on Debian, because Debian has very strange ways to manage paths. Okay. Register the master. Rep manager, rep manager, verbose master register. Okay. And get registered. Standby clone. Create and a standby. Why we, we want to do this with rep manager? Why not doing by ourselves? Um, well, right now, rep manager use PG based backup. So you can use it. What if you want to change the location of a table space? You can do it in PG based backup. But the syntax is a little awkward. You can do the mapping in the configuration of Rep Manager too. Okay. Um, registering standbys. Successfully registered. Okay, so Rep Manager uh, cluster show. Show us this. It says, okay, you have a primary that is running and two standbys that are running. Both look at node one as they are primary. Okay. Upstream, yeah. This is because uh, we can have slaves on Cascada. Cascade, right? So, um, and finally, you need to get Rep Manager Diamond running. The monitoring history is not needed. I use it because I'm used it too, but it's, it's not really necess necessary. And then you can look at the status and the view. And finally, for the autofill over, you need also these three parameters in the configuration. Fill over auto, automatic. Uh, promote command. The promote command, I, I, I put it here a simple command, but it could be a script made by you. And follow command. Not the, note the last part. It's different from other versions of Rob Manager. And you also need to consider use connect timeout in the con, um, con info string. Uh, sorry, uh, that's this. Con info. Here, connect timeout equal to. This is to um, allow Rep Manager to detect, uh, detect um, network failures as soon as possible. Okay, so after I did this, I, well, this is uh, an idea of an. Uh, Cluster, okay, sorry. I killed one of the machines. There were virtual machines, so just went to the button, right? And it started to detect the problem and promoted a server. Now. How much time it took for this? Well, it detected the problem at 1.48, and the new primary was promoted at 1.49, almost a minute. 
Okay. It, it actually happened that it were one extra minute because uh, there was some time between the network uh, said there is a problem with this machine. Okay? So it was actually two minutes. Well, two minutes. And the uh, second standby followed the primary at 1.49, one minute after the problem was reported. So it's the same time, right? I mean, it's, uh, it's not a minute to zoom. It's in parallel, right? OK, so. And Cluster Show say, said to us, there's a file in no, the new primary running, standby running, and which is the primary of this standby. And also tell us what the problem was with node one, timeout expired. He tried to connect for enough time and couldn't connect it. Okay. Um, how much is this? I, I mean, it was two minutes. What's the availability of that? Um, so, sorry, I, I'm going to move until the end. I want to see this. Oh, I put it five minutes just for, <sighs> to be fair. 99 does 99. 99%. That's how many nines? Five. Wow. But yes, of course, if only happens this only problem once in a year, remember you have to sum up. That's why, that's why you have um, mean time between failures and mean time to recover in the, in the complete formula. But there was a problem. The primary failed, rep manager made it work, but application servers were still seen trying to connect to primary. That means the service is not available. So even if you do your work, there is a problem. And you go to jail, too. So how can we fix this? Well, we need to inform the application servers there is something to change. And we are going to use PG Bouncer for that. Now, why PG Bouncer? Uh, by the way, PG Bouncer, uh, this is the official website. Download sort from binaries from current version 1.8. Okay, now why PG Bouncer? Why not PG Pool? How many people here use PG Pool? Yeah, I know. I know. And PG Bouncer? Really? Wow, good. PG Pool is bad. <laughs> 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 no, 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 <laughs> no, no. All right. Um, PG Bouncer has a use case, and PG Pool has another use case. So they both can be used together. They are not exclusive one of another. Why? PG Bouncer allows us the configuration via scripts. PG Pool doesn't allow that. PG Bouncer allows three modes, statement, transaction, session, uh, and probably uh, you have seen how good it is to put PG Bouncer in transaction mode. PG Pool works only in session mode. PG Bouncer allows to pause, resume, what is that? Well, it's saying to the client, 
hey, wait for a minute. Please, don't disconnect. Your call is important for us. Just wait. OK? <laughs> and that's better than saying, uh, uh, no, you can't connect here. Please go away. Go away. I don't want to see you. And, and, and that's the message you should see, right? Also, PG Bounce's max client count doesn't depend on max connections. And this is a very di big difference with PG Pool. PG Pool's configuration for connections depends on max connections. If you do it wrong, you will have problems. What happens if you put in max client con a very big value? It only means customers will have to wait more. But wait, not getting errors. So PG Bouncer actually is a connection concentrator. That's its job. And it do it very well. It's very quick on that. PD pool, uh, well, uh, capabilities for failover are bad, don't use them. Uh, maybe there is a good way of configuring PD pool for failover. I haven't found it. But PD pool does load balancing. Well, actually, you can do load balancing with PG Bouncer, but not transparent load balancing. You need to affect the, the, the application. And that's what developers never want to do. So, PG Pool ability to transparent do load balancing is very useful. And it's the only thing I think it do it well, if you configure it correctly. There is a white list, a black list. You need to configure that. Currently, PG pool is not dangerous. In older versions, it was dangerous because it, there wasn't streaming replication. And, and PG pool ended up writing on a server it shouldn't write. And the replication was broken then. But with the streaming replication, there is no problem about that. So it's not dangerous. The worst thing it will happen is that uh, the customer will receive an strange message. OK. So. PG Bouncer is what we are going to do for this, to use for this. How? Well, what I do, I, is to put PG Bouncer here, in the application servers. Why? If I connect directly to my own server, and this server fails, it doesn't affect anyone, only me. So it's, it's the perfect solution for me. But it's not always possible, of course. There are reasons I, I will, I'm going to talk a little about that. But um, OK, so install it, zoom install PG Bouncer, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to mess with the configuration of PG Bouncer. It's very simple, actually. What you need to configure is this align in databases in the databases section of uh, of the file uh, pgbouncer.ini, and you also need to add users to user list. Thus dot txt, txt, which is in the same directory. And those users get created automatically with a script that 
PG Bouncer has. So it's very easy. So I added this line, master host, the IP of the master, user Postgres, DB name Postgres. OK, I use that database. The application servers connect at local host. Um, OK, this is a, a, an old version of the query because it's using Rep Manager cluster and cluster name doesn't exist anymore in Rep Manager. The schema calls Rep Manager only. And the, no, the table is no, named node, right? Yeah. So you need to query Rep Manager dot nodes. Okay, instead of this one. And the rest I think is correct. What this query is proving is that I can generate the same line that I need to put in the database section of Rep Manager, which is very good. So, it, well, this is a, a script I used in a customer. Kind of, it's not exactly the same script, but what it does is it has a list of server applications, IPs. It posts all of them, so it says the customers wait. I'm not having a problem, just wait a minute. Then promote and stand by, then generate the, query, the, the line with the query. I write it in a PG Bouncer template I have. Move the, the file to the server, reload, resume. Now it can connect, can allow customers to connect and start working. So what the customers saw, that for a minute they were waiting. Anything else? So maybe there, are, uh, there will be users that have problems, of course, those working directory and primary will be disconnected, right? But they are not all. Yes? Yes, because PG Bouncer allows me to connect like if I were connected, connecting to Postgres. I use this PG Bouncer database, which is a, a false database. It only uses it for sending commands directly to PG Bouncer. So I connect with PSQL from the pr new primary to the IP of the application server, port 6432, which is the PG Bouncer port, user, well, Postgres and database PG Bouncer, which doesn't exist really. It's not Postgres, it's PG Bouncer. And you send the command reload to force it to read the configuration, the changes, and resume to start working again. Yes? That, that's the nice thing about PG Bouncer. You can't do that with uh, people. Yeah. Okay, and done. Uh, what can you do with something like this? Well, in, in this customer, that was the, the the idea, but it happens that they have some. Application servers that are 
Windows application servers. And, and PG Bouncer doesn't run on Windows. So I used a script like this to reconfigure PG Bouncer to change its ETC host files on those machines and do a lot of other crazy things to allow all cl clients to connect to the right server. That informed the application of the changes. Yes? You could try to use something like HRProxy or something that helps to root, and because HRProxy accepts commands to, to root as well. So uh, instead of trying to manually change the IPs or roles or DNS. Yes. Um, OK. I haven't used HA proxy. Uh, I, I'm not sure if it's able to detect the failure of the Postgres service. Because it, it maybe could detect if the machine fails. But if the service failed, failed that's a different thing. So uh, I prefer to do, to do this. Also, I have more control on this. Now. I think the problem with HA proxy is that you're putting a single point of failure there, the HA proxy. Right? So you need, you need two yeah. HA proxy, and that, that makes it even more complex. Yeah. 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 Which is one, one reason I don't recommend to put PG Bouncer in the middle. Now you have a problem, because if that server fails, you now need a way to do uh, out of failover for that. That's a problem. Also, remember that PG Bouncer allows me to concentrate connections, even on session mode. So that is a, a, a very big advantage. Um, in a customer, I put it 10,000 on max client count. But Postgres only accepts 700 connections. <laughs> and it, work, it works very well. Yes, uh, there are sometimes some customers waiting. But it's not minutes, but milliseconds. So it's something. Huh? No? Okay. okay. So, with that, now we have reconfigured application servers. Good. And that gives us that little number. But, uh, problems. DNS problems, for example. What happens if you have everything in one data center? But if you have two data centers, there are other problems you have to consider now. What if you cannot put PG Bouncer on application servers? For example, recently uh, we had a customer that has uh, 50,000 GPS devices every one of them connecting directly to Postgres to write. And the configuration is done manually in a console with a um, text box, uh, four text box that controls that no number goes up for, for 200, 255 allowed, I don't know. So, it's very difficult to programmatically change that. In that case, you probably will put PG Bouncer in the middle or in the database. But then you have a problem. If you put it here and the server dies, what can you do? Ah, yes. 
Those are problems. How you can solve them? Well, they are solvable, solvable. If you want to know how to get very high availability in distributed databases, I mean, in different data centers, in different countries or different continents, what you have to do is go to the booth of second quadrant <laughs> and ask for always on architecture. That gives you this number all the time, no matter what. You know why? Because, uh, no, that's not. Remember this formula? No, just not. This one. Remember we said that if time to recover goes to zero, it doesn't matter how many times it fails. And always on architecture, uh, have that ability to lead, to go, time to recover to almost zero, milliseconds only. So it doesn't matter. You can have any, any amount of failures you want to have. OK, so this is what I was going to say. And I have here a, a table, a, a stick. And if anyone make any questions, I'm going to hit you. No, sorry. <laughs> Please, do questions. <laughs> because I'm too lazy to change it again. <laughs> I had it in English, but I changed it for another talk, and now I lost the other one. And sorry. <laughs> okay. Any serious question? Yes. I don't know if it's serious, but I'll try. Okay. <laughs> about microservices and everything, it's kind of a, 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 it, it sounds weird, the idea of pause the application. Because one of the things that we, we learn to do is you have to kill the application, you have to fail fast, and then a container or eventually <coughs> another thing will take, take, take over and will connect to the right place. Um, I don't know if you have experience with microservices and how do you see this both words? I, I tried not to have experiences with that. <laughs> I tried very hard. I have a lot of problems with people doing things like that. I don't like it. But I know it's done a lot. Solution is always an architecture for that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, you have to go to the booth. <laughs> yes? Okay, uh, Web Manager connects to the primary. It keeps an, a connection open to the primary and executes queries there to detect the failure. So if, if the server is uh, very busy and it has all connections used, Web Manager already has its own connection. So, Rob Manager doesn't detect failure of the machine. It detects the failure of Postgres. Okay? okay but if the master goes down, how can the standbys uh, decide that they're actually down, that the master is down? Uh, uh, no, 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 need, no need for that. Uh, uh, it, it, I mean, if you have a network problem, for example, then. Uh, the web manager on standby won't execute the query on master and will think is that is that. 
So what rep manager do is nothing about it. <laughs> now, it first tries to reconnect, okay? There is some parameters for that, but that's why you need a way to kill the other node, fencing the other node, or, or, or put it in a jail. Don't, don't bother me. And PG Bones is doing exactly that. Because if I reconfigure the PG Bouncer and, and teach the, the server to connect to the right server, it doesn't matter if the master is the original master. It's really, the, it's really alive. All, all servers will be connecting to the new primary. Okay? So it's, you just ignore it. It's a little, little, you know. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, you need you need to to ensure uh, every customer, every application server knows get the memo. So that's why uh, I have, for example, uh, the script doing changing etc hosts in some Windows servers. So they get the memo, yes. If, if one server doesn't get the memo, uh, that server will be writing to the original primary and that's a problem because you can't simply take that information and mix it. So, okay. Yes, yes. And solution for that is always on architecture. <laughs> There's a good reason I, I want to go to the booth. That's because uh, it involves some proprietary software and there is a code of conduct in this conference. So let's go to the booth. <laughs> Other question? By the way, there is something I, I'm not, I haven't talked about Rep Manager. There is something called, sorry, locations. There is the ability to say, hey, I have servers in different data centers. And this data center failed. The network failed. I'm really sure you want to promote a server in the other data center. You can configure that. So you can decide with a witness, with a server called witness, if the data center really died or there is only a problem connect in the connection between the two data centers. Yes. Yeah? Happy Manager has the ability to put um, old master after automatic flyover, but uh, if we, uh, some network craps told that uh, prep manager put the old server in a jail, but uh, if we, they return back, you can provide some rewind and then put again with the cluster. Prep manager does that to, or you do that uh, manually? Yes, yes, yes. If you have configured yes. HDUI yeah. and PG Rewind can be used? Yes. There's a, a node rejoin. Yes. Uh, node rejoin. Okay. Node rejoin. Yes. yes. That's an, uh, uh, one of the new commands. Yes. All that is on the rewrite of you know, prep manager board. Okay. Yeah. So if you're using three, so, uh, yeah. Okay. The, the, there is a lot of new commands in Rep Manager 4. Uh, uh, for example, you can use Rep Manager to stop progress to restart progress uh, in, instead of doing it manually in some hacky way in, in a few scripts. So there's a, a, a lot of things to, to do homework for you. By the way, 
one homework you go to home because I have one minute went is this. Remember, PG pool is still useful because of load balancing. Mix both. <laughs> That's a complicated thing to do, but a useful thing to do. So that that will wait for the next conference, or you can do it in your home as, as a homework. That's enough. Thanks.